You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have, you gotta have, you gotta have knowledge for knowledge for life. You gotta have. I heard on the news the other day that there are 5,000 PhD degrees that are working as janitors. as garbage collectors. Being a janitor is not a disgrace. Being a collector of garbage is not a disgrace. Honest labor is worthy of us, especially if it allows us to take care of our obligations. But when you see 5,000 PhDs that have no job or are working in jobs that they are overly, 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 overly qualified for, how many of you here are in college and now hope to get your degree, let me see your hands. Okay. Well, if the PhDs don't have jobs, and you are hoping for a degree to do what? To do what? To get a job. Well, there are millions of Americans out of work. The president just lost spectacularly over jobs. And I'll tell you something. It wouldn't matter who is in the White House. Your job situation is really not going to improve. I don't mean to be a peddler of doom or gloom, but when you study the prophecies of these books guided in the study by one who has been taught by God, then we know tomorrow's headlines before they appear. Let me give you an example that you're going to see in a short while. Stock market crashes. Worse than 1929. Well, you don't worry about that because you are not a stockholder. But look at the people that have put their hope in stocks. Another headline. Dollar falls, hyperinflation. Dollar worthless. What are you going to do when the dollar that you love and will hurt others for has no more value. Uh, you have gold, some of you, uh, during the bling season. You, you bought a little gold and you bought a little diamonds. And people are telling you right now, bring your old gold. May I tell you, gold never gets old. So you want money, paper, that has no value over gold that in the 60s was $35 an ounce is now over 1300 Another headline coming up. Gold at $2,000. $2,500 an ounce. 
Do you have an ounce somewhere? <laughs> you have your paper. Oh, I see. Well, let me pull out some paper. Wouldn't it be something if you came out one day and saw a man with a thousand dollar bill lighting his cigar? Wouldn't that break your heart? Especially if you don't have a thousand dollars to light yours or even a cigar. But the value of this paper is steadily going down. Headline a few days ago. The Federal Reserve Bank buying up U.S. treasuries. Look, brothers and sisters, this is serious. Now, of course, you know the latest gossip. Jay-Z and, and, and J.C. Hammer having a fight. You know about Lindsay Lohan, poor child, and Taylor Swift and... Yes, and Kanye. You are up on all the garbage. You heard about Bishop Eddie Long and that's been your conversation and others. And but what will be the future of America when private bankers buy up U.S. Treasuries. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Uh, all I know is, I know. And that's why you're in the right place today. Now, let's go back to the question. Why does the enemy keep our people illiterate? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave this answer when he was three years old in the teachings so that he can use them for a tool and also a slave. He keeps them blind to themselves so that he can master them. I'm going to ask another question. How many of you are in high school or have dropped out? Would you raise your hands? Nobody wants to admit that. Come on now. You at home. You know, that's, a, that's cool. You're in high school or you dropped out? In high school. High school. High school. Dropped out. Okay. High school. Dropped out. High school. Okay. Do you know that many millions of Americans are getting a high school diploma and are considered functionally illiterate? I'm not talking about a few people. I'm talking about millions. Now, if I am a functional illiterate, meaning I cannot read or write at the grade level that I got my diploma from high school uh, on, but I can't write at that level, I cannot read at that level but I'm out in the world now 
Well, if I can't read, books don't excite me. If I can't read, then I am an oral person. So my ear is the most important instrument in my life because it is through the ear that a word will come that will keep me ignorant. It is through my ear that a word will come that can start me growing toward wisdom. In this Bible, when God speaks to Israel, I've never read once where God told Israel to read. God told Israel, hearken, hear, listen to the voice of God. So most people get their knowledge from what they hear, not necessarily from what they read. Now, knowledge is your birthright. Every human being should be gifted with the right to know self and the environment and the universe into which God gave us birth and life. For us to come out of our mother's wombs and be 20 years old, 30 years old, not able to read. Victims now of where we place our ears. Who do you listen to? Well, if I'm a gangbanger, I listen to my buddies. And some of them have knowledge that they pass on to the members of their group, but not necessarily wisdom. Some knowledge. Well, if the leader knows more than the followers and the leader is ignorant, then the scriptures of the Bible are correct. If the blind lead the blind, both fall in the ditch. Now, in Chicago alone, nearly 50% of our children drop out of school. <laughs> Among whites and Hispanics, the number is outrageously large as well. Now, they use sports figures and entertainment figures to tell you, stay in school. That's like going to Cook County Jail and telling the inmate, stay in Cook County. Staying in a school that will let you out as a functional illiterate is a waste of your life and your time. Something is wrong with the educational system that this is the result of what it produces. Well, look, 
if I turn on my radio, my ears and the air waves are feeding my brain cells, producing for me my mind. So I've turned my dial to the funkiest station because I like funk. I mean, just the language should tell you you should stay away. When somebody is funky, you're trying to tell them, look, there's a bathroom here, take a shower, put a little deodorant on, you smell terrible. Well, when something is funk, of course, this is a terrible age that we live in because good becomes bad, bad becomes good. When something is funky, it's nice, it's right. It's just a messed up group of igno uh, ignoramuses that are being used as a tool. Let me see. Now, the jobs that used to be around for the unlearned, unskilled labor force. See, when I was coming up, men had jobs. You would see them with their lunch pail, going out to work. Mommy was at home preparing the sandwich. Daddy and Grandpa, if you remember back far enough, they had a little job. And off of one man's pay, they were able to put food on the table and at Easter time, get you a little suit or a dress or something nice for Christmas. But today, today, you have hardly nothing to look forward to. You can't look forward to a job because the jobs are not there. So how do you survive when you turn on your TV and you see all this wonderful stuff that is being offered right next to a food commercial? McDonald's as the chief programmer of your babies that are now telling you where to take them. <laughs> Mommy, I want, I want to go to McDonald's. And silly mommy, all right, me too. <laughs> so you're living off of the garbage that is being fed to you, you call it fast food. But it's killing the American people. Well, I don't go to McDonald's. I go to where? Well, I go to the corner store because in the black community, it's called a food desert because there are not adequate supplies of fresh fruit and vegetables available. So you're eating out of cans or you're eating really things that your health has been grossly and greatly compromised. Why does the enemy keep our people illiterate so that he can use them as a tool? A tool for what? What is a tool? It is an implement, an instrument or utensil held in the hand and used to form, shape, fasten, 
add to, take away from, or otherwise change something by cutting, hitting, digging, rubbing. But there's also a person used to accomplish another's purposes. All my young brothers here, 18 years of age, please raise your hand. 18 and up. All my sisters, raise your hand if you're 18 or up. Okay, now look. War is on the horizon. Another headline. Israel attacks Iran. America comes to Israel's aid. We have to have volunteers because we don't have the draft now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, we got to make the armed forces attractive like a whopper. So we're going to make <clears throat> the armed forces attractive. Be all that you can be. Join the army. And you see them, they're crisp, they're sharp. The Marines, they're crisp, they're sharp. And you in the hood, you know. Job. Mm. I ain't got no job. I dropped out of school. This is a chance for me to get some money, see the world, and perhaps get an education. Yeah, that's the bait. You know, when you go fishing, you always hide the hook with the bait that the fish likes. <clears throat> so you join. You're in boot camp now. How many of us have been to boot camp? Now, okay, thank you so much. Sisters, you've been to boot camp too? <laughs> oh, you got the boot in your camp. <laughs> they call that domestic violence. <laughs> Excuse me. Now we're smiling, we may be laughing, but gaining knowledge should be a pleasurable experience. You know, when you're in school, if it's not pleasurable, who wants to be there? If I'm not growing, who wants to be there? If I'm not learning something useful, who wants to be there? Now, boot camp. I cut your hair. Sorry about them dreads, brother, but can't have that. You clip it all down, you know, and you're a soldier now. But there's an enemy somewhere. See, any time you're a soldier being sent to Iraq or Afghanistan, you're not sent there to build a country. You're a soldier. Soldiers are sent to do what soldiers do. They kill. Am I making sense? Now, look at how crazy the system is. You're a mother. You're in at home with your children. And now you are off to war. In the 40s, they never took a woman out of her house, took her away from her children. 
and sent her to war? Don't you know you can't kill and nurture at the same time? By nature, you are a nurturer of human life. But once they take you out of the home and put you in boot camp and send you to Afghanistan, then they had to teach you of an enemy that would take your life and put it in your heart to take that enemy's life. So before war, they have to make you hate the people that they're going to send you to war against. What made Muhammad Ali a great, honored, loved, and respected human being? Because when they asked him, to step forward to join the army, he said, I'm not going. He said, the Viet Cong have not done anything to me. They never call me nigger. Wait now. That may sound simple, but somebody that does not respect your life is your enemy. So where are you going over there? when your enemy is right here. See, so now, wait, 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 wait. But if I'm gonna give you a job because you don't have one, don't know how to make one, I make the armed forces attractive, I make you a killer, I send you overseas. You do one tour of duty, two tours of duty, three tours of duty, and you come back home and there is no job. And you've been trained to kill. The economy falling apart. And the first law is survival. Look at where we live in the hood, man. You don't have an education that gives you an opportunity to be all that you could be. Hmm. Columbus discovered America. I mean, come on. George Washington, he never told a lie. You know, sweet George. What are you being taught that you can actually use? Almost nothing. That's perpetrating a fraud to bring you to college and ask your parents to pay this kind of money and then you borrow money from the government and when you leave college and can't find a job you have a debt to pay and no money with which to pay it that's perpetrating a fraud So our young people are being used as tools. When the war was going in Iraq and every day they would come on the news with the casualties. Did you notice the ages? 18, 19, 20, 22, 24. And on television they call them heroes. They died for our country. Is it the truth? I'm asking a question. Did they really die for the benefit of the country, for freedom, for justice, for equity? Or did they die for oil, for drugs, to give America power in the Middle East to control the oil coming out of that region of the world? 
This is what you died for. But who can tell you the truth? And if someone stands up to tell you the truth, we are anti-American. We are haters. When in fact, we are the real patriots. Freeing the American people from the bondage of ignorance that allows government to misuse their lives. I watched President Bush go home at night to his children at the White House, state dinners, Rumsfeld, Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, see? We go home to our children. What, are you, what do those mothers go home to? Those fathers, those friends whose hearts are aching over their friends that perished and are still perishing or they come home broken on drugs wounds that can never heal legs gone arms gone face destroyed and then government sometimes won't give them the money they deserve try to find a way out of paying the soldiers who paid the ultimate price for the agent orange that has destroyed them some of our people think we've moved out of the inner cities to the suburbs and we didn't know that we were moving out of a place where we had relative safety to an environment that looks good but it's near some dump that is poisoning the water table your house looks better but your health is worse because you're drinking water that is death. Who cares about you? Does government really care? Does corporate America really care? Then the last one to care must be you and me.